Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and I'd like to do a review of Slay the Spire, shall we? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present my grade for the game. Like I'm going to give it a letter grade, like we're in class, and then I'm going to tell you if in 2024, which is when I'm doing this review, if you should buy the game in the second portion of this video. So, as we dive into the review, it becomes important to understand what kind of a game Slay the Spire is. Looking at the Steam page and reading the contextual blurb, it says, We fused card games and roguelikes together to make the best single-player deck builder we could. Craft a unique deck, encounter bizarre creatures, discover relics of immense power, and slay the Spire. And the user-defined tags are roguelike, deck builder, card game, card battler. All of those things are true, but we need to kind of maybe break those apart so you can understand, maybe if you want to get this game, if you haven't tried it yet, what kind of a game is this? What are you doing in the game? So it is a deck builder, meaning you have a deck of cards and each class that you get, depending on you unlock them as you go, but let's say you're the ironclad first, you get a starter deck of cards and then throughout the game, you're going to have a choice usually between three cards that you can select to add to your deck and hence build your deck. You will, these are randomized from a pool of cards and you will then try to synergize combos with the other cards that you have, the relics that you get, and other elements of the game to try to make the best deck that you can to defeat the challenges that the game presents. Now, they call it a rogue-like because it's not like it's the game Rogue, which we get that rogue-like definition from, meaning like, you know, a top-down, grid-based, turn-based RPG-style game. But instead, what we mean is that it's a random game, it's different each time, and that if you die, it's permadeath, it's game over. There are some rogue light elements at the very beginning of Slay the Spire, meaning like when you first start out, you don't have all of the cards and all of the classes unlocked, or all of the relics, but you get them pretty quickly in your first few hours of playing through the game. So once you get to that point, then everything is in play, and it's true roguelike in the sense that each run is randomized from a controlled set of variables, and you try to build your deck to win the game. So that's what you're doing in the game. That's what kind of a game it is. It is a deck builder. It is a card battler. It is also a rogue-like. And as they say, they fuse them together, taking elements of each, and that's what you get. And Sway the Spire at this point is, in my mind, the archetypal roguelike deck builder. It is the game that all other games of this type are compared to, and it is so immensely successful and popular that it has inspired many other games to iterate this formula and come out, be great in their own right. Monster Train, for example, there's a lot of other good, you know, deck building card games out there, Aces and Adventures, but this is the kind of progenitor of it to this degree. There's been deck builders before this, tabletop deck builders, digital deck builders, and there's maybe other games that try to do this, but in, for my money, none that do it this well. You know, it looks simple at first, and yet, even with its small pool of cards, it is incredibly complex and takes a long time to master. So, that out of the way, let's dive into the actual review of the game along the criteria that I have set for all of the games that I have been reviewing on the channel. By the way, in the upper right, at the very beginning of this, you will see a link for all of my game reviews in a playlist. Actually, before I dive into my categories, I forgot to talk about my experience with the game. I have hundreds of hours in Slay the Spire, perhaps a thousand plus hours across the Switch, my laptop, and my PC. It is a game I have played a bunch of. I am not a professional Slay the Spire player. I play on Ascension 20 and my win rate is bad, um, but I still enjoy the game tremendously. Um, and I have a let's play of this game showing you, you know, me trying to clear the game on Ascension 20 and some victories I've had there, as well as a complete beginner's guide if you want to learn the basics of how to play the game from the ground up. So those will be linked in the description below. So the first category I like to talk about with games is the fun factor. How much fun is Slay the Spire? Well, for me, 
it is insanely fun. It is a game you can play for hours and hours and hours on end. It's different each time. And that being said, it can be so punishingly difficult. It can be so brutal that, like true roguelikes, you want to walk away from the game and you might need a break of a day, a week, or a year, depending on how salty you are about your loss. A lot of people will say, um... There's RNG to this game. Well, of course there is. It's a card game. That's inevitable whenever you're shuffling the deck. That is a factor in the game. But if you look, especially at the highest levels with the people who are professional, their win rates articulate that even with the RNG, most of the time if you lose, it's your fault. Which is really difficult to take, but it's a learning moment. It's like, I need to get better at the game. I made a bad choice somewhere. If I would have done this differently, I probably would have won. Sure, you could get hosed right out of the gate, um, and that is absolutely the you know can be the case. And especially as you climb higher on ascension levels, you know it gets so difficult. But for the most part, it's a fun game because. You feel like, okay, that was my fault, I can get better, I can do this, and it's going to be different the next time, and let's see. And it's so challenging that when you get that deck where everything comes together, it feels so good to dominate. And when I say challenging, by the way, I mean on higher ascensions. I do not personally think, once you grasp the basics and the fundamentals, that if you're playing this game on just the default level, not even like ascension zero, basically, I don't think it's that hard. I think you can win with lots of different decks and you can have a blast with the game. And that's what's cool about it, is that it's variable. I know that there's lots of different players of different types of this game. You know, I've done a lot of reading on Reddit and in different message boards and just things online where some players don't even want to climb into the higher ascensions. They like playing it at the lower level and just having it be a more casual experience. And you can do that, which is great. If you want to challenge yourself, you can push it and you can go higher and higher onto like a level ascension. Um, 20, and then try to beat it on 20, and then try to beat the heart, which is another difficulty that they added um, to the game, Act 4. And these are challenges that you get to set for yourself, which make it really cool. You could specialize in one character, you can just try to play all of the different characters, it's up to you. So, I think this game is remarkably fun. I'm a person who loves card games, I grew up playing Magic the Gathering, so given that I have a dispensation for enjoying card games, but... I still think, even without that, many people will find this game to be fun, and I find this to be tremendously fun. Now let's talk about the controls. How does this game control? Well, luckily, it's a card game, and so the controls really aren't that big of a factor because the game is paused until you make an action. So, uh, you know, it's not really a game that requires precise timing or control. That being said, the control is good. There are key bindings to do things like look at your um, deck, look at your draw pile, look at your discard pile, uh, you know, hotkey the different cards in your hand, the mouse interactions are very slick and intuitive, and you can play this game on mobile, on Switch, um, and it works flawlessly. So for me, the controls are great. I think everything that I want to see is right there. I have never had um, a major issue with the controls, and you can toggle them pretty reasonably um, in the settings if you like. Now, a subset of the controls that I like to talk about are the UI and the systems in the game. So, how are the systems in the game? Well, luckily, there's really only one system in the game, which is playing Slay the Spire. There is not too much on top of that. There are different game types, like you can do the daily challenges, you can do the ascension climb, um, but for the most part, you're playing Slay the Spire. And... I think at some point during the review, let me just interject this right now while I'm thinking about it before I forget. I'm talking about Vanilla Slay the Spire throughout this entire thing. But if you want to talk about systems, another element you could talk about would be the modding element. And there's people add all kinds of characters and other game types and on and on and on. I'm not really talking about that at all here because honestly, all of my time in Slay the Spire is without doing any mods at all. That should speak to how great the core package is. But if you want more, there certainly is um, on the workshop. You can get so many cool mods for this game. So as far as the systems go, they're great because there's really only one core system that you have to interact with and it's done uh, very, very high level. I have no problems interacting with and understanding what my cards do, seeing things. Um, there's supplemental material for like on wikis and things if you really want to get into the numbers, but the in-game documentation and systems are good. 
And that kind of dovetails into the next bit, which is the UI. I think the UI for this game is great. There is cool icons for everything on the top. Everything is very intuitive. It is all cohesive. I have never lost Slay the Spire because I didn't understand how to use the UI or it wasn't functioning in a way that I thought. It's minimal, but everything is there and displayed. You can do some alteration with how it displays some of the information, but for the most part, you can see how big your deck is. You can see how many cards you've got left. You can see how much health you have, how much money you have what potions you have, what floor you're on, all of the easy information right there for you. So I think the UI is phenomenal for this game. You're going to hear me say stuff like this about the game a lot throughout this review, by the way, in case you couldn't tell, because I love this game. So next, I want to talk about the story. The story for the game is not really a factor. I mean, there is lore, there's cool lore, there's cool elements, there's a whale for reasons. There's a spire that people are kind of thrown into and, and trying to ascend. There's a, a beating heart. There's, you know, just mysterious stuff going on in the game, which is really cool. But as far as cohesively finding out the story, that's not really why you play this game at all. It's not really why I ever played Magic the Gathering, although they spun a huge bit of story off of that. There's books written about that. But uh, for me, I always liked reading the cards and getting story there, but this doesn't even have that kind of um, text like, you know, in Magic where there's a lore box on the bottom. It doesn't even have that. It's just functional stuff. So the story is not a factor in this game, but it's still a cool environment, and there is enough lore and enough uniqueness that make it interesting. Now let's talk about the graphics. How does this game look? I think the game looks fine. You're not playing a game like this, generally card games, for the phenomenal graphics or effects. But at this point, I think it has just a really unique, cartoony style. Um, all of the card interactions look pretty good. And I like the graphics in the game. They're not going to blow you away. They're, I mean, like, you know, if you talk about Hearthstone or, um, you know, MTG Arena or, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, like... Some of their stuff is better. Their effects are better, but, you know, it doesn't really matter for me. I'm not playing it for those reasons. And I still think that the graphics are really cool in this game because I personally like the art style. Now let's talk about the audio in the game. How is the music in the game and how are the sound effects and any voice acting? Well, there's not really voice acting and the sound effects are cool, but the money is the music. I think the music is great. I love, I mean, I have the theme song in my mind i can get it i can recall it it is distinctive i've listened to it so many times and i'm a person who doesn't even put on other music when i'm playing slay the spire and i have hundreds if not a thousand plus hours into the game so um that tells you all you need to know about the music it's not the best music i've ever heard in my life but it's good and it's part of the package speaking of the package how does it all come together how would I rate this game's style? Whenever I talk about style with games and my reviews, I like to think of it as, does this game have a soul? Is it approaching a work of art? Is there something unique to its identity that sets it apart from other games? And yes, yes, yes. This game oozes style. It's got, like I said, you've got the whale, you've got these cool characters, you've got distinctive... Um, sound effects and music you have cards and card effects that now have become iconic in other games i'm playing i'm like oh it's like this relic from slay the spire or oh it's this mechanic from slay the spire i mean it has defined the space so well it's pick three mechanic was so incredible that i i don't have any proof for this but it feels like it influenced um even the explore mechanic in hearthstone like allowing you to kind of choose three and draft in that um fashion so I think the style is through the roof on this game. It is completely unique. It is one of a kind, and it is a archetypal genre-defining uh, masterpiece of a game. So now it's time to give my overall grade. How do I put all the pieces together to grade Slay the Spire? So the first thing I do when I look at thinking about my grade is I ground it in the Steam reviews and Metacritic. So currently on Steam, as of the time of this review, 
Slay the Spire has 127,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews, which is a significant number. It um, says this came out full release in 2019. And since that time, it's received a new character um, and the fourth act and some balance changes. But for the most part, this game is that core game and it's still going. That many reviews for a game type that is kind of niche, like deck builder roguelike, is a testament to how successful this game is. And on Metacritic, if I look at this game, um, I see that it is an 89 from 28 critics and it's a 7.8 from users. So with all of that context, how do I grade Slay the Spire? Well, if you were in my class and you presented me with this game, I would give you an A+, and I would shake your hand. Slay the Spire is an A+. It is a once-in-a-lifetime, genre-defining experience. All subsequent deck-building roguelikes will take influence from, in some fashion, Slay the Spire. And it's so good that five years after release, I still play it. I still enjoy it. I don't even need more content. It would be cool, but it's like I still haven't even mastered what's present, and it still feels fun when I play the game, given the fact that I've put so much time into it. So I have no hesitation with giving this um, an A+. It is so far in the reviews that I have done on the channel, it is the only other game to get an A+, with Subnautica. Those are the only two that I've given that rating to, and it's just a fantastic game. So now, knowing how I feel about the game, let's talk about if I recommend Slay the Spire to others, and if I think this is a game that you should buy and play in 2024. I first talk about if you like this type of game, like this type of genre. So if you like card games, if you like roguelikes, um, then yes, you should play Slay the Spire. And that, that's all card games, tabletop, digital. But honestly, just like I said for Subnautica, this is such a unique, you know, iconic experience in the gaming space that even if you don't care for those things, I still think you should try this game because it's so well done. The execution is so high. It's simple enough it's not going to blow you away like i had a lifetime of experience growing up playing magic and when i started playing Yu Gi Oh with you know the ten thousand plus cards that were in play i was lost this game is not going to do that to you you can get into this game even if you've never played a card game before so i think that yeah there's some genres that you might be influenced by but i think everyone should play it let's then talk about difficulty is this game difficult it is such a great piece of easy to learn, difficult to master, because you could play this on the lowest level and have a blast with it, and then you can ratchet up the difficulty and be a person like me who, um, you know, maybe most people are probably way better than me, but I am an, like I can play at Ascension Twenty, I can beat it sometimes, but nowhere near what the professionals are at. Um, I my winning rate is terrible, uh, but I still try it at that level because I want the challenge. So. I think it's difficult, but once you learn the basics, and you can look at my beginner's guide to get a feel for that, I think you can handle all of the classes at the basic level and do fine. And that is makes the game approachable enough for a new player. What about the value of the game? Is there value? Is it a good value for the money? Well, guess what? Um, I'm looking at Steam right now, and Slay the Spire is sitting here at like 25 bucks. It goes on sale a lot. You can get it for like 20, 25 bucks on the Switch, or on mobile, or on PC, console, whatever. It is incredibly worth it. The, it can be played again, and again, and again, and you're learning, and you're learning. There's different classes to play. Every game is different. I have a thousand hours, so if you think about $25 for a thousand hours, that's ridiculous. The value is insane. Yes, phenomenal value for the money. And then dovetailing, you know, from that would be replayability. Is there replayability? Yes. This isn't a game that, you know, has good value because you put a hundred hours, but then you wouldn't play it again. This is a game that is different each time, and you could play it forever. So the replayability is about as high as you can get for a game, and that's not even talking about the mods that you could download. So overall, I would recommend Slay the Spire to everyone. I give it an A+, and I'd love to know what you guys think of 
my review and of Slay the Spire. Do you agree with my A+. Do you think that it is a game that everyone should play? Tell me in the comments below what your experience is with Slay the Spire and if you think my review is on target or way off the mark. And also, again, I will be linking my Let's Play and my Beginner's Guide if you think, man, I should really try this game out and I want to get into it, but I, it seems difficult. I walk you through the basics so that you can enjoy the game. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and take care.